Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rukhah HaKodash, and double honor to the apostles and others of Great Millstone, who are learned the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from through the Holy Spirit. Honor, salutations, and blessings to the men that are preaching the gospel of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and all sincerity, diligence, and truth, and peace, grace, and blessings be upon the house of David, which is the elect. So I just want to touch on this topic, all right, um, the generation of judgment. Okay, and um, you know, uh, through the spirit, I was just uh, meditating on uh, Matthew the twenty third chapter, all right, uh, towards the end of the end of the chapter, which I have pulled up right here, and um, how Yahweh Shai, you know, he um, you know, he constantly he spoke in parables, and um, he also spoke uh, parabolic when it even came to uh, timeline, all right, because um, he uh, told the the you know generation that he was you know in you know during the ancient roman empire all right when the time he was on the scene um he told that generation he told those uh individuals during that time that they were going to be judged all right they were going to receive the judgment of uh the the the, the wrath of yahweh all right bashim yahweh they were one of the wicked i'm just uh, i should say of that generation that did not believe on him they were going to receive the um the judgment of the day of judgment right and um that day of judgment is you know a uh, a a generation okay it's a, a actual you know uh time where the lord was going to put was going to uh judge the, uh the world all right judge the world from all of the the wickedness that it has been doing all right since you know since the beginning of time and um um, I was reading this, um, like I said, I was reading the scripture and it just made me uh, uh, think about how all of the things that are taking place currently, you know, in the world lines up with this being, or should I say, verifies that this is the generation of judgment, that the time period that we're living in currently is the generation where Yahweh Shai is going to return and uh bring that that second death all right or that final judgment upon the earth all right and which is why it's so you know um important to uh watch for the signs that's why Yahweh i always you know spoke about watching all right when you are when you when you have measured the time diligently and you understand the prophecy and you understand um how the how the things currently happening in the world lines up with biblical prophecy all right, the end time prophecy, then you will have to come to the conclusion that this is the generation of of Yahweh Shapat, right? <laughs> this is a generation of Yahweh's judgment. So, you know, I just want to touch on that. And, um, you know, Lord willing, it be edifying unto the elect. So let's start here with Matthew's uh, 23rd uh, chapter, verse uh, 31. It says, wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up, fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. All right. And when Yahweh Shai speaks about the, the, the children, main basically it's the offspring. And really that is going into the reincarnation. All right. Because we know that the scripture speaks about how the father won't be, um, won't have to pay for the sins of the son. And the sins of the son, you know, uh, won't come upon the father, right? But it also speaks about how the Lord visits the iniquity of the of the um, the father upon the third and fourth generation, all right? And that is a hard saying. That is a um, you know a dark saying. And for those who have ears, let them hear that. That signifies the uh, reincarnation, the the spirit of a man coming back into the flesh on the earth to uh, carry out their judgment, whether it be, you know, a uh, righteous judgment or rather, whether it be a, uh, a wicked judgment. All right. So that's why Yahweh Shah is telling these wicked scribes and Pharisees and, and lawyers um, during this, that the Sadducees telling them, and I'm speaking of the wicked of those, um, telling them that what? that fill ye up the measure of your fathers meaning finish what your fathers started right let's see where it says right here 
It says, um, go ahead and finish what your ancestors started. So they weren't talking about, he wasn't talking about specifically their actual father, right? He was talking about themselves basically um, in the reincarnation, what they did back then to the prophets, finish what you have done um, now because everybody has a, a position and a role, all right? The, you have the predestined elect that I believe uh, Peter spoke about, the predestinated elect, and you also have the predestinated uh, wicked of Israel. You have the predestinated one uh, ones who are going to receive salvation, the, the, the ones who are of his sheep, and you have the ones who are not going to hear it. That's why he said um, in, in Matthew's 13th chapter, unto you it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. All right. If something, if he already knew it wasn't given unto them, if he made that statement, then he already knew that it wasn't given unto those um, particular Is uh, Israelites that uh, was on the scene during that time to understand the the, the knowledge, understand the, the truth, his gospel, believe on the gospel of Yahweh Shai and repent. It wasn't given unto them because it was predestinated. All right. Verse tw uh, 33 says, ye serpents. And ye, and, uh, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Right. You, they can't escape escape the damnation of hell. They can't escape the the, the damnation of the destruction. Right. Because that hell and this word is uh, uh, Gehenna, which is um, metaphorically speaking of the second death. Right. The the, the fire that Yahweh Shai is coming with. Scripture tells you that. Um that, that, that Yahweh Shai is coming um, in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on all those who did not obey the gospel. OK. And that also entice, ties in with uh, Babylon, a great being turned into that lake of fire uh, during World War Three, which is prophecy, which is being uh, fulfilled. All right. As we speak now, of course, it's not completed, but it's it's coming into um, it's manifesting. And that's why, once again, it's important to watch because all of these prophecies that we have uh, been given unto us, right, by the prophets, by Yahweh Shai, by the disciples, all of those prophecies really are pointing unto this, this generation of judgment. Okay, so 34 says, wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city right and during this age because after yahweh shai um ascended you had the 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 um disciples which became apostles uh went out and, and taught right you had the um and went and, and when they went out and taught obviously they gathered up fruit and then those, those fruits went out and taught OK, and then you. Um, but then as as uh, Paul spoke about, there was a falling away. OK, there was a time period where the prophets were in prophesying in the name of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. OK, that's what, the, you know, in, in, in that time period from where around like 70 A.D. when once Jerusalem got ransacked and then the um, Israelites got scattered. Right through through Asia Minor, got you know um, they also went into uh, the interiors of Africa. You had some went into uh, Europe. Okay, after that period, you had a succession of time that passed dispensation of time, but eventually the preaching of Yahweh Shai was taken off of the earth, and that's when you had um, Israelites, you know, uh, uh, Israel went into captivity underneath e underneath Esau. All right, and in, in, in the transatlantic slave trade, all that was prophesied. And the reason why, you know, ultimately that that we went through that is because we there was no there was no um, there was no profit. No, there was no prophets on the scene during that time. Now you had men, of course, that uh, were still those um, those elect spirits, but the prophesying. In the uh, of Yahweh Shai, the the preaching of repenting and turning back to Yahweh by Shimi Yahweh Shai wasn't on the scene until um, the the what the the elder Abba Vivens came came along, um, which from him on down 
to the times that we're in right now, you had the the, the name of Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, being prophesied again, being preached again. Okay, in 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 the Lord's will, all right, um, of Israel repenting, the elect of Israel repenting, turning back from their wickedness, waking up to who they are. Ezekiel, the uh, thirty seventh chapter, the Valley of the Dry Bones, right? All of that start to take start to take uh, form, started to manifest. So now you have the name of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai being exalted upon the earth again, right? And that's happening because of, of what reason? Because this is the generation of judgment. The Lord can't judge or the Lord won't judge until, you know, um, uh, until he gives the warning. And the warning has to come through the preaching of in the preaching of his name. All right. You might have had people back in the, you know, before this, this truth came out. OK, preach the, the Bible. But it wasn't in it wasn't in its pure in its purest form. It wasn't through the Rakhah Kodash because, as Yahweh Shai said, that the Heavenly Father was going to um, send the Comforter in His name. All right, that's why uplifting and exalting the name and coming in the name of Yahweh Shai is so important because you can't receive the Holy Spirit unless you receive it in the name. All right. And that name, Yahweh Shai. All right. So 35, it says that upon all, so like it, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barakias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Now, why would the Lord say Yahweh Shai during this time? All right. This is, uh, what, what around about 26 27 AD right why would the lord say that they slew Zacharias all right uh, uh the the prophet Zacharias when that was you know um a, a few uh, you know a few hundred years prior all right obviously those scribes and Pharisees that Yahweh was speaking to weren't alive you know, they weren't three, four hundred, five hundred years old. But once again, he was speaking uh, to them uh, through the spirit of what? Of knowledge and, and knowing of reincarnation. But the thing is, it says he says that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from Abel. So now we even going back even further. He says uh, all the way from Abel. That was before the flood. <laughs> right. That was even, but that was before Noah, right? That was before um, uh, Enos or Enoch, right? That was before Seth. So it says, from the blood of righteous Abel until the blood of Zacharias, son of Barakias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily, which means surely I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. All right. All these things shall come upon this generation. And why is that? Because this is the generation of judgment and the Lord is gathering up. And, and that's why, you know, you have, as they say, um, this this time period that we that, that we're in right now currently is the the um, most the most humans that have populated the earth. All right. The most the, the, the highest population of humans on the earth right now which means that there is a heavy, there is a large amount of spirits on the earth right now. Now, of course, we also know, according to, um, what is that, St. John, uh, thought I had it up here, I'll pull it up. We know, according to St. John, chapter 5, verse uh, 29, it says, and uh, start at 28, it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that had done good unto the resurrection of life. OK, and that is what uh, uh, Paul spoke about. At the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. All right. And, and us that is alive and remaining shall be caught up with him. All right. The ones who die believing in Yahweh Shai, they're going to get resurrected which means literally to, to rise again, 
all right, unto everlasting life. And they that have done evil, wickedness, sin, unto the resurrection of damnation. And that damnation is that second death, all right? That second death, which is the, the, the which is the day of judgment, which is the day of the Lord's wrath. The Lord's wrath is going to be appeased during the second death. All right, and that second death is going to come upon a, a specific generation that it's going to manifest, I should say, during a, a specific generation. And we are living in that generation according to the what Yahweh Shai, what the uh, said according, yeah, what yeah, according to what Yahweh Shai said. Now, when you read in the book of um, yeah, book of Mark. Let me uh, actually, I'll leave that there. In the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 28, it says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So, once again, Yahweh Shai speaking in a parable, he that have ears to hear, let him hear. So, he says, When you see this fig tree uh, branch putting forth leaves, then that's an indication, that's a sign that summer is near. That 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 process that that tree is going through happens during a particular season, pursuant to Ecclesiastes three. Uh, let me pull that up. Ecclesiastes uh, the third chapter, verse one. It says, "To everything there is a season, and to and a time to every purpose under the heaven." Right. So that means that there is even a time of judgment. All right. There is a time where the Lord has set forth the the uh the, his his wrath okay to come upon the earth and that time is linked to certain prophetic events let's go here to second Ezra 4 verse um 30 where we start at 4 verse 33 it says till I, uh till i answered and said how and when shall these things come to pass? Wherefore are are our years few and evil? All right. So the, the, the prophets always inquired about when these things, these signs, these uh, uh, events were going to take place. But the thing is, when represents a time period. So they were asking and inquiring of what time are these things going to happen? All right. The disciples, even Zach, even Yahweh Shai, tell us when shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world. So the Lord didn't tell them when he gave them signs of when he's going to return. He gave them um, events that were going to take place in that generation that was going to signify that this is the time period. All right. The, the generation that he was going to return. Verse 34, he says, and he answered me and said, do not thou hasten above the most highest for thy haste is in vain to be above him for thou has much exceeded. All right. So we can't hasten above. We can't hasten above the generation or the time period or the season that the Lord already set forth for it to happen. Just like you can't hasten a fig tree to bring forth its uh, uh its figs, its fruit before the time period of spring and summer. You can't force a fig tree, all right, to um to to to, to spring forth during winter or, or or you know late fall. It's not going to happen because it's it's once again <laughs> to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So likewise, we can we couldn't, all right. You had Ezra, Ezra, he wanted to bring forth the judgment. All right, the second death, the, the 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 day of doom. He wanted to bring have that happen all at once, bring all the spirits on the earth once, and then during that time just to get it over with. But as 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 he says, you can't hasten above the Lord. It says, "Did not the souls of the righteous ask questions of these things in their chambers, saying, How long shall I hope on this fashion? And when cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward?" Similar to what was written in Revelation the sixth chapter. All right, how long? Oh, holy and true, right? So uh, we we must wait to be avenged. Let's pull that up real quick. Uh, Revelation chapter six, verse um, 
10, it says, and they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, doeth thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth, right? Because the blood of the saints have been being uh, uh, um, slain, uh, spilled. I remember when John the Revelator saw the whore, which represents Babylon the Great, it, she, he said, what? She was drunken with the blood of the prophets and the blood of the saints. All right. Although this is the this this generation that we're in, you have the prophets actually prophesying. But this isn't this isn't the only time that the prophets been in them in Babylon, in America. All right. Remember, we've been we got <laughs> since since what? Uh, uh, 1610, the southern tribe, the northern tribe been been over here getting jacked up. But you got prophets during, you know, that's a part of the northern tribe. Right. They've been getting jacked up over here since what 1492. So we we're looking at about around 600 years of the Israelites being um um you know a little less than 600 years um of the Israelites being here in Babylon in the blood of the 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 saints, the blood of the prophets being spilled here in Babylon the Great. All right. But once again, it, there is a specific generation that the Lord was going to um, judge. He was going to avenge. And we can clearly see, according to prophecies being fulfilled, manifesting, that this is the generation of judgment. So let's go back to Matthew 13, verse, oh, I'm so lucky. You know what, let me finish this second Ezra. Verse 36 says, and unto, and unto these things uh, Uriel the archangel gave them answer and said, even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for he hath weighed the world in the in the balance. Okay, see, so Uriel the archangel told those souls that were in their chambers, which basically meaning they were in the spirit world. Um, as you see here that we read in Revelation, basically there the this the the souls, spirits were crying out um unto the Lord. Basically asking him, when are you going to avenge us that shed our blood? Okay. And they're saying, well, how long we got to hope on this fashion? But it, but the answer was, even when the number of seeds. Now, seeds is something that who have? Man has. All right. Remember, the uh, the, the Yahweh Shai told, the disciples, told those, um, those Israelites, those Jews, that when you die, you go to the spirit world, you're like an angel. There is no marrying or giving into marriage. Right. There's no need for for the sperma in the spirit world, spirit realm and your spiritual in, in the celestial body because you don't reproduce. So what he's saying here is when the number of seeds, meaning your reincarnation, your reincarnation, when when you have been reincarnated to the to the set amount of times where the Lord her has already predestined from the foundation of the earth. That's when he is going to give you the the, the hope of your fashion that's when he is going to give the judgment because remember there's going to be a judgment for the righteous and the and the unrighteous the righteous judgment is is salvation everlasting life dominion okay there that's that's the that's the the uh judgment of the righteous so he says reading on it says for he hath weighed the world and the balance by measure hath he measured the times and by number hath he numbered the times and he doeth not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled. Okay. And that's why you had to go through. We had to go through uh um the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and 68. We had to we had to go through coming to Egypt again by way of ships. We had to go through um the the valley of, of dry bones, which is about Babylon the Great. We had to go through the falling away. Right. We had to go through um, the, 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 the deadly wound of the beast being healed. Right. But now we're coming to the end of this beast. All right. We're coming to the time period now. We're in a 10 toes. We're coming to the time period where this beast is going to bring forth his karagma. And that's why we're constantly watching out for that. We're coming. We're in the time period of the third world's war which is going to be a war that is is fought with nuclear uh arsenal which is ultimately going to destroy babylon the great those things 
are now the that's the generation that we're in and as we seen as we read right uh let me go back here so it says so in like manner when you see these things come to pass know that it is nigh even at the doors verily i which means surely very surely or truly i say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done okay so that is once again an indicator that this time all right is the generation of judgment because yahweh shai uh, clearly stated that this generation this time period can't pass i won't let's see let's go to the yep nlt it says i tell you the truth this generation will not pass from the scene where is the scene the scene um ecclesiastes solomon said what i have seen under the uh, under the sun the place of judgment so the earth this earth and this generation all right shall not pass from the scene before all these things take place now when you read up he tells you about all of the things what the return of amashiach he tells you about um let no man deceive you he tells you about the 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 affliction him shortening the days he says about how it's going to be a time like never before there's going to be false um prophets shall arise false anointed shall arise okay he told you about all these things and then he also speaks about how he's going to return so if we're seeing all of these things happening right now then that means that his return also is is destined to take place during this same generation because he stated that this generation will not pass from the scene till all these things be done all right and a part of those things being done is his return and we know that when yahweh shah returns he is returning for judgment all right he's returning for salvation but he's also uh returning for judgment so let's get that here in second peter chapter three uh go straight to the point verse um six it says whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished and that's speaking about during the time of um noah right because when you go to the time of noah from the top genesis the six the corruption of man this time period where it says but the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they looked and took um took them wives all of which they chose this is all this is a a succession of time this isn't just like a couple of days that this happened all right the lord kept he seen how uh the sons of god were becoming increasingly wicked generations throughout generations were passing where they were getting more and more wicked to the to with a with a generation that came where the lord said this is going to be the generation where i'm going to destroy all flesh right and it says right here um genesis chapter 6 verse uh, five and i'm gonna jump it says and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth idolatry you know uh, uh abominable immorality sexual immorality you know just uh whatever you know just wickedness same thing you see doing happening right now which is why how i said uh as in the days of noah all right it says that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only continue only evil continually and that's what you that's the minds of people to this day and it's even worse now okay because because of of the the wickedness first of all you got the wicked ruling on the earth so that mindset is just uh, um permeated throughout the entire earth all right when you have the when you have satan ruling during during that uh during we have satan ruling an age a generation all you're going to have is just adverse ways of Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shai just going throughout the earth. But what happened? Verse 8. So you had that happening during the time of now you didn't have actual Satan ruling the earth during that time, but you had uh you had uh, uh wickedness going on during that time, right? And when I say Satan, I'm speaking about the you know, um the spiritual demon Satan working through his children, which are who the 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 um the Edomites, okay. But when you go down verse uh where were we 
verse 8, it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generation of uh, generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation generations, and Noah walked with the Most High. All right. Now that's significant because, as it says here, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at that time, and he walked in close relations, uh, fellowship with, um, with power. Okay. Now, how? So because there was uh, uh, Noah, right? He was found blameless in his generation. And that is similar to the elect during this time. We are found blameless. And it's because of what? Because of the blood of Yahweh Shai. All right. This is the only time period where, let me see where I want it. Um, you know what? It's such a scene, diligent, finding peace. I wanted to uh, pause this. There with me. Oh, there we go. Uh, Job chapter Jude, Salakio chapter one, verse twenty-four. It says, "Now to him that is a, that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy." All right. We, Lord willing, of being part of that elect, are found faultless or blameless. Right? You got a perverse. Verse nation. No, it's in Philippians. Yep. Philippians chapter 2, verse 15. It says that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. All right. So similar to Noah being found blameless, we are found blameless through the blood of Yahweh Shai. And it's only in this generation that we're in right now that the name of Yahweh Shai has been called upon. The name of Yahweh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has been uh, preached, and we uh, uh, believe on that on his on his name and on his and, and his sacrifice. That's why in Revelation the twelve chapter it says what they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That blood of the Lamb made us what uh, um, pure, made us uh, sanctified, made us um blameless okay so us being blameless us being uh pure in a crooked amongst or in the middle of a crooked and perverse uh nation or world is similar we're in a similar um footing that noah was in okay and because of that that is also another indicator that this is the judge the generation of judgment because it was during this time that the name of Yahweh Shai was preached. And that and through that name is where you only get um, um, purified. You're not getting purified in the name of Jesus. You're not getting purified in the name of, uh, of uh, Allah or God. You got the Lord and the Heavenly Father and his son's name must be magnified. Those names must uh, are the names that you must come come in all of the prophets came in the name of yahweh and then the disciples came in the name of yahweh bahashem in the name of yahweh shah so this is what is happening during this generation and as we see once that name started to be preached what started to take place all of these end time prophecies started to take shape in the same generation okay in the same time period from once again, Elder um, Abba Bivens onto the elders that that you know of GMS, and then even amongst that group, you know, even amongst the the, the Israelites and the prophets speaking, you also have um, men Israelites that are coming up against the prophets. All right, you got men that are coming up against, and I'm speaking about of the Israelites that are coming up against. The, the true prophets of the Lord going back to what we just read right here. All right. This is a sign. This is a signal that this is the last generation because you got the prophets coming who the Lord said he will send. Behold, I will send you prophets, wise men and scribes. And what is going to happen? They were going to be persecuted. 
and it's interesting because I was just looking at um <laughs> I was looking at our channel. I just typed it in and this this guy came up, right? And I just and I seen um I seen this and I'm like, who the hell is this? And this came out like four months ago. So listen to what he says here. So he said, men of valor 12, y'all niggas got to die, right? And then this one came out, I guess, a year ago. You can see the demons in his eyes, but regardless, for the sake of the lesson, all right, him saying, you know, men of valor 12, which is the name of our church, he said, y'all niggas got to die, right? And that's why Yahweh Shai said this. Going back to Matthew 20, 23, verse um uh 35, that upon all that upon you may all the righteous blood shed of the, upon the earth, so like yeah, upon you may all come. You know what? Let me read it again. Let me slow it down. That upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, the son of Barakias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Now, why did Abel get uh, 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 um, uh, slain? Right, he got slain because of his because his works were righteous. All right, he 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 offered up the right sacrifice, and that got him he that got him uh, uh, killed. Why did Zacharias? get uh killed and and abel was killed by cain which once again <laughs> um that is also another indicator okay because for a long time cain the spirit of cain was not identified on the earth the world didn't know who the spirit of cain and in, in, in his in his seed was but during this generation that has been revealed it was during this time that the uh, um, Edomites were revealed who they are. The, the spirit of Cain was revealed who he is. Remember, the Lord cursed Cain and called him a vagabond, a fugitive. All right. That curse was the, now, of course, we know that Cain and his lineage got killed during a flood. But he once he got reincarnated through uh, Esau. And for a long period of time, that wasn't revealed. It wasn't made known who that that evil spirit, all right, uh, that vessel of wrath fitted to destruction was. But because we are in the last generation, those things are now manifesting. Those things are being revealed. Okay. So now, so we know uh, uh, Abel got killed because he was righteous, because he gave the correct sacrifice. And Zacharias got killed. For what? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's read that account. Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 20 says, And the spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of jo uh, jo Jodadiah, the priest, which stood above the people and unto them. Thus saith God, why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. So what did Zechariah do? He basically prophesied against Israel, right? He he uh, um, showed, well, I wouldn't would say he prophesied against them, but he showed them their transgressions, right? In the house of, house of Israel, their sins. But because they were of that generation of vipers, they were of that, 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 uh, that um, people of the wicked, all right, the, 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 the wicked of Israel, what did they do? It says, and they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. All right. So they killed him because he uh, uh, prophesied and, and told them to told them that, what, you got to repent or you're not going to be able to prosper. You got to repent or you're going to be destroyed. You got to repent or the wrath of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is going to come upon you. And that is exactly what we are doing. At, in this generation, we are telling our people we're offering up the right sacrifices 
through Yahweh Shai, all right, uh, as Abel did, okay, and Abel listening to his father, Adam, which we know was Yahweh Shai, right? So we're offering up the right sacrifices, and also we are showing our people their transgressions in the house of Israel their sins. And what is, is going to happen? Some of us are going to be put to death. Some of us are going to be, you know, uh, 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 ostracized. Well, you know, we've already been ostracized, but we're going to have to go through that um, that persecution. But the Lord said all that was going to happen because what? Verily, I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. All right. So let's get um, this right here. Let's go back to Second Peter three, verse um, six. It says, "Whereby the world that was that that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment." and perdition of ungodly men all right so the lord has reserved this earth all right he has reserved this earth for a particular time period that he is going to what judge he's going to bring judgment upon uh the ungodly men and perdition which means destruction upon the ungodly men now in order to be ungodly right as Yahweh Shah said you gotta <laughs> he came that you will have no cloak for your sins. All right, let's get that uh, cloak. Uh, I believe it's in St. John 16. Let's see. So bear with me. It's gonna be a little difficult. I thought I was spelling cloak right, but you know what? Let's type it in. Cloak for their sins. Okay, St. John 15, 22. John 15, verse 22. It says, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had, they had not had sin, but now they had no cloak for their sin. All right. And that's exactly. And we're coming in the name of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai being ambassadors of, of Yahweh Shai. And there is now no cloak for the ungodly's uh, sin because we have prophesied in his name. We have showed Israel their transgressions. We have showed Israel that they were Israelites. OK, they didn't even know that they were the children of the covenant. Our people had didn't know that, you know, hey, we were and we were once a part of that. But. Once again, the Lord, who, whoever the prophets were, the spirit of a prophet is subjected unto a prophet. So once that prophet was woken up uh, and, and given a word, you know, uh, to go prophesy, they 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 uh, follow, took heed and follow. And we came in the name of Yahweh Shai, showing our people their, their transgressions and telling them to repent. And if they don't repent, then what? They have no cloak for this. They have no covering for their sin. All right, so let's get uh, see what else we got here. All right, there. This is good too. Uh, Matthew chapter sixteen, verse one. It says the Pharisees also, also with the Sadducees came and tempting, and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! Ye can discern the face of the skies, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? Once again, the signs of the times are indicating or an indicator of what is going to come upon or what period in the Lord's timeline that we're in. All right. And according to the signs, measuring the signs diligently in themselves, we 
can conclude, all right, <laughs> undisputedly that we are in the, the time or the generation of the judgment, of the final judgment. And that's why Yahweh Shai said that. He said, you can discern the face of the skies, but you can't discern the signs of the times. You can't tell what time it is based off of the events that are taking place. All right. Um, let's see. It says the red skies, you know how to interpret the weather signs from the skies, but you don't know how to interpret the signs of the times. All right. You don't know how to interpret the signs of the times, but it was given to his prophets, the servants to do that or his servants, the prophets to do that. Verse four it says a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And that's what you see happening, you know, uh, um, in this world, in this age. Right. A lot of people don't believe because they don't see any signs. They don't see any any miracles, you know, happening that we read about in the book of Acts or we read that Yahweh Shai was doing. All right. Something grandeur like like that. But Yahweh Shai even spoke about how when he comes, shall he find faith on earth? Because blessed is he that have seen that believe and have not seen. But as he says, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall be no sign be and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Now, what was the sign of the prophet Jonas? When you go to another um, scripture, it says you right here in, in Luke 11, verse 30, it says. Um. I'm going to start at 29. It says, when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation. They seek a sign. All right. They don't, they don't just doesn't, they don't believe based off of hearing of the word only. And that's why there's only a remnant, a small a remnant that believe based off of hearing. That's why the scripture says faith cometh by hearing of the word. All right. Only the predestinated elect are going to believe on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai based off of the prophesying. Right. So it says, and there shall be no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonas, the prophet. Now, what was the sign of the jo of Jonas, the prophet? Verse 30 tells you, he tells you for as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, because Jonas didn't come with spiritual powers. He wasn't like Elijah or Elisha. Right. He didn't have he didn't have a, a staff that can turn into a, um, a snake like Moses. All right. Jonas just got a word, got a prophecy and. <laughs> the Lord, Lord, uh, um, Lord told him, commanded him to go prophesy and tell, tell the Ninevites, all right, the people of Nineveh, which yeah, Israelites living there, to repent before the destruction comes. So Jonas was a sign, as it says, and, and for as Jonas was a sign for the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. All right. Because the that generation that Yahweh Shai is speaking to is the same generation that we are in right now. Because we're still, Yahweh Shai is still being prophesied. He is still speaking to this generation through his prophets. But as Jonas was a prophet, that is, that is the sign that this generation was going to be given, um, that, there, that this is that generation of judgment. That the prophets were going to be out here uh, in prophesying and letting you know what time it is and those who are going to hear it they're going to hear it and repent and believe and those who aren't hey they're dead they're not going to have a cloak for their sins because they were told it but they didn't believe it okay so um you know what i think i you know pretty much got the got the point across um so i'm gonna leave it with that okay just just basically as we you know, to sum it all up, that this is the generation of judgment. And it's clear and evident because as Yahweh Shai said, that this generation is not going to pass till all these things be fulfilled. And as we're seeing, all of these things are being fulfilled right now. Well, actually, let me get this. All right. First John chapter two, verse 18, it says, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that that uh, the, the anti-Messiah shall come. Even now, there are many anti-Messiahs whereby we know that it is the last time. Now, you had the, the prophets like John back then. They um, were hastening the coming of the day of the Lord. But there were 
prophecies that still needed to needed to be fulfilled. See, back then was the last time because Yahweh Shai was on the scene, but that was the beginning of the end. We are now at the end of the end because when you read in the book of Revelation, those prophecies are majority of those prophecies already took place. There's literally only about two <laughs> two prophecies that um, have to come to pass, two major prophecies that have to come to pass before the end of this world. And that is the Karagma, which we know and which we see, which is evident is just not has been mandated worldwide yet. OK. And then ultimately the destruction of Babylon the Great. But we know it's the last times because these things are already happening. And as he goes on, verse 19, it says they went out from us, but they were not of us. Now, you hear this during the time of John. This was over 2000 years ago. And you had this. This uh, as an indicator of it being the last time you had men that were a part of what, you know, the, 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 the disciples were doing. Right. But they weren't really a part of it. It says for if they had been of us, they wouldn't have they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made man that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So you want to have people that. Uh, break off from the uh, pillars that started the proph prophesying, started the teaching, started the uh, um, preaching of Yahweh Shai. You're going to have people that broke off from them and started teaching wayward doctrine, started started coming up and combating against the ones that they were originally underneath or originally, you know, uh, um, teaching the same gospel of. And that one that in itself is a sign of this of this being the last generation because as you just said we know that this is the last time all right and a part of that is this taking place and we see that happening uh um uh, you know very very clearly happening amongst israel today all right so that's why it's important to measure the times that's why it's important to watch because when you're watching you're able to see how this is that generation of judgment because all these things are being fulfilled during this time. And this time can't pass from the scene until all of it is fulfilled. All right. So, you know, I'm going to end it there. Lord willing, this was edifying unto the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakakwadash. Till next time, Shalom.